Welcome to another episode of Untold Legends, where we explore the stories found within the world of video games, movies, comics, and anything in between. Last time in the Mortal Kombat Timeline lore series, I detailed the story of Major Jackson Briggs, otherwise known as Jax, one of the strongest men found on Earthrealm, enhanced with cybernetic arms that amplify his strength even further. I covered his origins, his loyal dedication to protecting Earthrealm as a military man in the Special Forces, all the way through his downfall at the hands of Quan Chi, and his ultimate redemption standing by his fellow combatants as a hero once again. This time, I'll be covering another force of cybernetic strength, the cyberized Lin Kuei assassin identified as Unit LK4D4, codenamed Cyrax, a deadly mechanical warrior adorned with heat-resistant armor and armed to the teeth with weapons, including small bombs, a laser net, and buzz saws. Safety's disabled. Combat mode engaged. You are not so fearsome. <laughs> Cyrax wins. Flawless victory. Cyrax didn't make it into the cut with the original Mortal Kombat or even its sequel Mortal Kombat 2, but by the time of Mortal Kombat 3, the mid-1990s, it was more than established that ninjas and robots were cool, and the fusion of ninja robots made its way into Mortal Kombat 3. Cyrax was the second of the three cyborg characters conceived alongside Sektor and Smoke. As lovers of pop culture and movies of the time, the creators of Mortal Kombat based Cyrax's design using a combination of elements from the Predator's awesome alien dreadlocks, and the iconic armored look of Star Wars bounty hunter Boba Fett. The combination resulted in a pair of mechanical beings known early in development as ketchup and mustard due to the color of their armor. The original suit used for filming was red, and Cyrax became a yellow palette swap of Sektor with his own set of moves, although fans at the time speculated that Cyrax was actually a robotic scorpion. Since he was yellow, his net move involved bringing the opponent towards him like Scorpion Spear did, and Scorpion did happen to be missing from Mortal Kombat 3 makes perfect sense. Excellent theory, at the time, until Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 re-added Scorpion, and solidly confirmed that Cyrax and Scorpion were unrelated. And and the man under the Cyrax suit was Sal DeVita, who also portrayed several other characters in the series. He described the filming process as hot and uncomfortable. The suit was comprised of large plastic pieces that were heavy, and the helmet made it hard to breathe or hear anything while wearing it. But thankfully, he did survive the endeavor, and Cyrax made his debut in the original Mortal Kombat 3. Cyrax. Since the appearance of Cyrax, he's become a fan favorite, appearing in multiple entries of the series and surviving all the way through the early 3D era of Mortal Kombat and beyond. He even had an animated appearance in the Mortal Kombat Defenders of the Realm animated series, appearing briefly in two episodes as part of cybernetic Lin Kuei assassins trying to take down Earthrealm's warriors, or as Sonya Blade called them, Ninja Gizmos. It's hopeless! We take out five of those Ninja Gizmos and ten more show up! Sub-Zero? What's that sleazoid doing here? They're also shown in a quick flashback in their human forms pre-cyberization, and it's quite different than we see them now. In modern times, Cyrax and Sektor are completely flipped in terms of appearance. Their appearance here is widely seen as an illustration error mixing the characters up. But to be fair, in these early days of Mortal Kombat, the lore was still very much taking shape and evolving, so their human identities weren't really a clear thing back then. And as far as his live-action theatrical appearance, Cyrax did appear in the sequel to Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat Combat Annihilation, one of the few scenes in the movie that's actually pretty awesome, and he looks very accurate to his in-game appearance. Death is the only way out. Major Briggs, Sonya Blade, Shao Kahn will be pleased. Shao what? Story-wise, Cyrax belonged to the same clan as Sub-Zero and Smoke, the Lin Kuei Assassins, thieves for hire operating under a code of honor. But around the time of the second Mortal Kombat tournament, the Lin Kuei was going through massive change. The Grand Master of the clan, Sektor's father, believed that the free will and humanity of its members was ultimately a weakness that needed to be corrected. He adopted the use of technology and decided to convert all of the Lin Kuei into cyborgs, unable to think for themselves and programmed to follow orders. Sektor was a willing volunteer, being 
just as extreme in his beliefs as his father, but many, including Cyrax, spoke out against the plan to cyberize the clan. Cyrax was taken by force and turned into a cyborg against his will, and Sektor and Cyrax became the first Cyber Lin Kuei. Cyrax was given the identification code of Lin Kuei Unit 4D4. By the time of Mortal Kombat 3 and Trilogy, Shao Kahn had invaded Earthrealm and absorbed billions of souls belonging to Earthrealm's human population. The Cyber Lin Kuei survived the attack since the cyborgs were stripped of their souls, now more machine than men. They used the invasion of Earthrealm as a chance to hunt down their ultimate target, the younger brother of the original Sub-Zero, Kwai Liang, now marked for death. He failed to save his friend Smoke from cyberization, and he was on the run. Cyrax, Sektor, and Smoke were all sent on the mission to capture and terminate him for betraying the Lin Kuei. Eventually, Cyrax tracked down Sub-Zero and engaged him in combat. During the battle, Sub-Zero temporarily disabled Cyrax and was able to reprogram him with new orders to find and destroy Shao Kahn. Cyrax had the advantage of no longer having his human soul intact, so he can avoid detection by Shao Kahn and his forces. In his non-canon Mortal Kombat 3 and Trilogy ending, Cyrax Cyrax delivered a successful sneak attack on Khan and killed him. After defeating him, Cyrax malfunctioned while waiting for the new orders from Lin Kuei headquarters, and he became lost in a desert, stranded and alone while heading back to base. In the canon version of events, Liu Kang destroyed Shao Kahn and sent him severely wounded back in the outworld. Cyrax never had the chance to challenge Shao Kahn, but did still find himself lost and stranded in the desert. When Cyrax failed to report back to the Cyber Lin Kuei, Sektor set out to search for him and found him trapped in the desert sands. Sektor retrieved him, and the physical damage sustained to his cyborg body was easily repaired. But Sektor was suspicious of Cyrax. He seemed different than when he was first constructed. Internally, Cyrax was struggling against his Lin Kuei programming after Sub-Zero meddled with it. During the events of Mortal Kombat Gold, the Elder God of Death Shinnok was invading all the realms with his demon army, and Sub-Zero fought in defense of Earthrealm. Cyrax wasn't involved directly in the conflict, but was ordered to continue his mission. The assassination of Sub-Zero. With Sektor monitoring his behavior closely, Shinnok was defeated by Liu Kang, and while hunting Sub-Zero, Cyrax began experiencing flashbacks of his life as a human. The Earthrealm combatants were able to separate Cyrax from Sektor, and Sonya and Jax attempted to restore him to his former self. Using the technology found in the newly established Outer World Investigation Agency, they were able to successfully deprogram him and restore his free will. All right, Cyrax. All systems are go. Are you sure you want to go through with this? If this fails, we won't be able to recover your main processor. We'll lose you for good. I realize that my existence is unnecessary unless I can fully recover my human psyche. We must continue with the process. All right, then. I'll begin the scanning process. Sonya, you hit the regeneration switch on my cue. All set, Jack. Ready on your go. once again, and I remember everything. Thank you so much. I am forever in your debt. Cyrax had regained his humanity, but kept his cybernetic enhancements. In an act of gratitude, he left his Lin Kuei roots behind and agreed to join the Outer World Investigation Agency as a scout meant to explore other realms outside of Earthrealm and monitor them for possible threats. During the events of Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, the evil sorcerer Shang Tsung and Quan Chi joined forces to revive the immortal army of Onaga, the Dragon King, the previous Emperor of Outworld. Raiden gathered Earthrealm's warriors to end the threat, but Cyrax became stranded in Outworld. He was attacked by two who escaped Oni from the Netherrealm, Draman and Moloch. He drove them off successfully, but he was being watched by the vampire Nitara, a creature from the realm of Vaternus, long ago conquered by Shao Kahn and merged with Outworld. 
she sought to separate her realm from Outworld and believed that Cyrax was the key to her success. She learned of a portal sphere that could separate her realm again, but it was in a location she couldn't physically access, incredibly hot and filled with lava. But Cyrax's heat-resistant armor could. She couldn't allow Cyrax to return to Earth Realm before retrieving it for her. She manipulated Reptile with knowledge about his people's civilization and a weapon as a gift, and sent him to attack Cyrax but not kill him. During the struggle, Cyrax's arm panel was damaged, disabling his ability to to return to Earthrealm. At that point, Natara introduced herself and promised to send Cyrax back to Earthrealm if he retrieved the portal sphere for her. The gemstone she carried around her neck allowed her people to travel through the various realms. Opening a portal would be no problem. Together they traveled to the mysterious lava shrine, and Cyrax fulfilled his promise and successfully returned home. The enormous heat and pressure of the lava burned out Cyrax's sensors almost immediately. He cast about blindly in the infernal pit, searching for the orb Nitara had sent him to locate. Cyrax found it resting upon a small submerged pedestal beneath the molten depths. As soon as he clambered to the surface, she demanded he hand over the orb. Nitara had promised to return Cyrax to Earthrealm once the orb had been retrieved. Taking her necklace in hand, she uttered a mystical incantation. A swirling portal opened around Cyrax had he only had time for a solemn bow before he was swept into the gateway. Since Cyrax made it back home to Earthrealm, he wasn't present during the events of Mortal Kombat Deception when Onaga the Dragon King was resurrected. He was defeated by the warrior Shijinko, but an even greater threat was on the way. The fabric of the universe was coming undone due to constant combat, and the elemental monster Blaze promised to give any warrior that defeated it the ultimate power to change reality. Cyrax rejoined his fellow Earthrealm combatants in the final battle of Armageddon to fight for the power of Blaze. In his non-canon Mortal Kombat Armageddon ending, Cyrax gained the power of Blaze and used it to fully restore his humanity and the Lin Kuei. <laughs> When he defeated Blaze, elemental powers surged through Cyrax and shattered his cybernetics. He was human once again. He allied with Sub-Zero, and with him confronted the cyborg Smoke and Sector. In an epic battle of men versus machines, Cyrax and Sub-Zero defeated their longtime foes. The cyborgs will be reprogrammed to serve the Lin Kuei once more, until they too can be reverted to their human forms. In the canon version of events, Cyrax fought against the forces of darkness and attempted to stop Shiva from climbing the pyramid. Cyrax was sent flying to the bottom and in the end he died in the battle like most of the combatants present, laying dead on the pyramid steps. <laughs> That was the end of his story in the classic timeline. Shao Kahn defeated Blaze and absorbed his powers as his own, ready and eager to destroy everything. Only Raiden remained to stop him, but he was powerless. His only choice was to send a message to the past, a warning to prevent Armageddon from coming to fruition. With Raiden's manipulation of time, a new alternate timeline was created, going back to the original tournament. In this new version of history, Cyrax, Sub-Zero, and Sector were all Lin Kuei sent to participate, secretly being used by Shao Shang Tsung to assassinate Earthrealm warriors to give Outworld an unfair advantage. But the plan to cyberize the Lin Kuei was already being discussed, a plan that Cyrax strongly stood against. I understand there are benefits to the Grandmaster's plan, but his plan goes against Lin Kuei principles. We are Lin Kuei, Cyrax. We will obey the Grandmaster's commands. It means giving up our free will, our souls. It will turn us into... Scorpion. Your inferior clan is dead. Soon you will join them. My clan may walk the earth once more. A challenge! Scorpion versus Cyrax and Sector. Your obsession with Sub-Zero ends here. Scorpion wins. I will have my revenge. 
Cyrax and Sector were defeated by Scorpion, and Sub-Zero entered the fray, the target of Scorpion's revenge. And moments later, Cyrax and Sector witnessed the destruction of their Lin Kuei brother. An unfortunate end, he once defended Earthrealm from the Netherrealm armies of Shinnok and Quan Chi. Scorpion will pay for this. Sub-Zero's fate is his own doing. His own doing? The Lin Kuei have a history of making ruinous choices. Such as the Cyber Initiative. I am among those speaking out against the Grand Master's plan. Surgically transform the Lin Kuei into glorified robots? It kills our intuition, our instincts. Did you speak out against the Lin Kuei's participation in this tournament? We were invited by Shang Tsung. He pays you to kill Earthrealm warriors. Betraying your own realm? I expect better, even from an assassin. My loyalty is to the Grand Master. Victory for Shang Tsung means the end of Earthrealm and the Lin Kuei. Raiden could see that Cyrax was much different than Sector and the rest of the Lin Kuei and spoke to the warrior. Cyrax was assigned to kill Johnny Cage, and Raiden's words began to cause conflict within him. If Earthrealm lost, that would mean the end of his world and his clan. Shang Tsung had eyes and ears everywhere, and Baraka warned Shang Tsung that Cyrax might have betrayed his contract. What are you doing? I am not here to fight you. I'm assigned to kill Johnny Cage. Shang Tsung no longer has need of you. What do you mean? He is terminating your agreement. And you. Cyrax wins. Ugh, this fight is not over. You mean to finish me? You couldn't even stop the actor. <laughs> Shang Tsung has turned on me. I need to find out why. So Sector, mercy. we need to talk. Our host tried to have me killed. You were speaking with the Thunder God. Your indiscretion has jeopardized my plan. Cyrax is Lin Kuei. He will complete his task. We shall see. The next match will be Cyrax versus Johnny Cage. What, me? All right, then. After confronting Shang Tsung, the sorcerer called forth Johnny Cage, the target that he had hired Cyrax to kill. This would be the ultimate test to see if Cyrax would honor his duty as a Lin Kuei. Cyrax was able to defeat Johnny Cage in battle, but remembered Raiden's words, and refused to kill a helpless defeated enemy. There was no honor in that. Oh. You were commanded to kill Johnny Cage. You disobeyed. I eliminated him from the tournament. He didn't need to die. You have broken your oath. I used my judgment. The Cyber Initiative will eliminate insubordination. We are not machine sector. I chose to serve the Lin Kuei, but I will not surrender my free will. Sector was furious that Cyrax disobeyed his orders. The plan to cyberize the Lin Kuei would strip them of their free will, but the assassins were already acting like machines, having blind devotion to the clan and following orders without reason. Tell the Grand Master, I am finished. No one leaves the Lin Kuei. <laughs> After defeating Sector, Cyrax left Shang Tsung's island and returned to Earthrealm. He became a target of the Lin Kuei and was hunted down while Liu Kang rose to the top of the tournament ranks. He was able to defeat Shang Tsung and saved Earthrealm, but Shang Tsung and Shao Kahn devised a second tournament in Outworld to finally decide the fate of Earthrealm. Prior to the beginning of the tournament, Cyrax was captured and forced into the Lin Kuei's Cyber Initiative, while Sector volunteered gladly beside him, and the procedure to become a cyborg was long and incredibly painful. Just 
Just like in the original timeline, Cyrax was doomed to spend his life in a cybernetic body, and both cyborgs were tested against one of their own, another cyberized Lin Kuei known as Hydro. Even though Hydro fought with incredible skill, Sector and Cyrax proved to be incredibly deadly. Hydro disengaged. Cyrax delivered the killing blow to his cyborg brethren and began his mission to capture the rest of the Lin Kuei that resisted. During the second tournament, the younger Sub-Zero traveled to Outworld to discover the circumstances around his brother's death and realized that in his absence, the Lin Kuei were cyberized. You are ordered to return to the Lin Kuei Temple for assimilation. Cyrex! I am Lin Kuei Unit LK4D4. You will come with me. I'm sorry for what they did to you, but I will not comply. <laughs> I will face the Lin Kuei when my task is done, not before. Sub-Zero temporarily disabled Cyrax and promised that he would deal with the Cyber Lin Kuei soon enough. But in this timeline, Sub-Zero's fate would be quite different. After Sector failed to capture Smoke and Cyberize him, their focus turned to Sub-Zero, and he was successfully taken. Sector and Cyrax requested permission from Shao Kahn to take one of the tournament participants. In return, the Cyber Lin Kuei would become loyal to Shao Kahn and serve him. Sub-Zero? No! You cannot save him. Stay here, or they will take you as well. We request that we may return him to our temple for judgment. And what do I gain from granting this bold request? The Lin Kuei's loyalty and service. Very well. He is yours. No! I will not be turned! Katana! How is it that Earthrealm ninjas brazenly appear before me when my daughter, Princess of Outworld, was sent to intercept them? Father, Be I... gone! Shao Kahn agreed, but was still furious that Earthrealm ninjas were able to infiltrate Outworld without his knowledge. At the end of the second tournament, Liu Kang defeated Shao Kahn and injured him severely, but dark magic allowed his survival, and Shao Kahn planned an invasion of Earthrealm directly, as in the original timeline. In his non-canon Mortal Kombat 9 ending, Cyrax was able to break free from his programming and destroyed Shao Kahn, then left the Lin Kuei to defend against Kahn's invading armies. <laughs> Though he had pledged his life to the Lin Kuei, Cyrax left the clan to help the Earthrealm heroes turn back Shao Kahn's invasion. For this act of desertion, he was marked for termination by the new Grand Master, Sector. Surrounded and severely outnumbered, Cyrax prepared to meet his fate when Raiden came to his aid. With him were 100 Shaolin monks. The Lin Kuei were defeated, though Sector was not counted among the dead. Cyrax was offered sanctuary at the Wuxi Academy, where he has begun a new life as an honorable warrior for peace. In the canon version of events, Shao Kahn's invasion continued, and Cyrax was part of an ambush against Earthrealm fighters. In his final confrontation during the invasion, Cyrax fought the mighty shaman Nightwolf. Attack! My speed and skill are beyond me. Nightwolf wins. Mere speed and skill will not win this war, Cyrax.
Cyrax had failed his mission and returned to the Cyberlin Quay. Many Earthrealm combatants were lost in the battle, and Raiden ultimately defeated Shao Kahn, changing history permanently. Years passed and Sub-Zero was able to regain his own humanity after going through cyberization and becoming a dark revenant of the evil sorcerer Quan Chi. During the events of the Mortal Kombat X prequel comic, Sub-Zero decided to finally take the fight to the Cyberlin Quay. With the help of the Shaolin monk Kung Jin and the drunken master Barai Cho, he gained the means to shut down the Cyberlin Quay with a virus that could restore their free will. He successfully found the Cyberlin Quay headquarters in China, inside an old Fallout shelter. But even the strength of a Fallout shelter was no match against his freezing abilities. Sub-Zero burst in, plugged in the USB device, and uploaded the virus. Immediately, the Cyberlin Quay systems picked up the intrusion, and he defended himself against scores of Lin Quay. Sector had taken the mantle of Grand Master after murdering his father, and took the Cyberlin Quay another step further, by cloning its own members into a massive number of cyborg warriors, but their numbers were too great and Sub-Zero was captured and brought forth in front of Cyrax and Sector. Sector ordered Cyrax to analyze the virus that Sub-Zero put in their systems, and Cyrax determined that it originated from a developer in Chicago. But the virus itself was a mystery. 94% of the Lin Kuei network was infected, but no immediate effect was noticed. Sector demanded to know what the virus was doing. Now 98% of it was uploaded, and still no effect on their systems. As it reached 99%, Sub-Zero escaped from his capture and Sector ordered Cyrax to purge the entire network's memory banks, but Cyrax was unable to. Something was happening to him. 100% of the network was infected, and the virus made its way into Cyrax, disabling Sector's slaving protocols. The set of commands that forced loyalty to the Grand Master of the Lin Kuei. Sector attacked Sub-Zero, and he commanded Cyrax to immobilize him with his net. But the virus worked exactly as intended. Cyrax's free will returned, and he immediately betrayed Sector. But Sector anticipated his betrayal and marked Cyrax as a traitor as well. Cyrax finally felt pain again from the attack, and Sub-Zero welcomed him back to the human race. It had been a long time since Cyrax truly felt anything, but him and Sub-Zero were in immediate danger. Sector attacked with his flamethrower, and the Cyberlin Quay clones came to the defense of their master. While Sub-Zero held Sector's flames at bay, Cyrax battled the clones, but Sub-Zero's determined Determination had no limits. He skillfully created ice blades and detached Sector's arms before ripping his cybernetic head from his body. It was over. Grandmaster Sector was dead, and the clones immediately began scanning the environment for a replacement. They determined that Cyrax was next in the line of succession and bowed to him as the new Grandmaster of the Cyber Lin Kuei. Cyrax decided to stay behind and self-destruct the base to truly end the Lin Kuei. He understood they betrayed their own codes of honor long ago, and Sub-Zero attempted to convince his friend to leave it behind. If his own humanity was restored, there was hope for Cyrax. But Cyrax stressed the Lin Kuei needed a clean slate with Sub-Zero as Grand Master. He initiated the self-destruct sequence and heroically gave his life to end the nightmare. The base exploded and Sub-Zero protected himself with a barrier of ice. He froze Baraicho to put out the flames he was engulfed in and then released him. The mission was successful and it was time to reform the Lin Kuei. But the tragedies the Lin Kuei had faced before would repeat themselves. During the events of Mortal Kombat X, the elder god of death Shinnok returned and was defeated, and his mother Kronika sought to avenge his mutilation at the hands of Raiden. During the events of Mortal Kombat 11, Kronika decided to recreate history as she deemed it, without the combined force of Liu Kang and Raiden, a pair that caused her trouble in every timeline she had ever created. While she worked to create a new timeline as a replacement, time was being displaced and warriors from various points of Mortal Kombat history were thrown into the present day, including the Cyberlin Quest. Sector and Cyrax were pulled from a time before Cyrax's reprogramming, and he was still loyal to Sector and the Cyber Lin Kuei. Together, they built a new assembly line and captured members of Sub-Zero's reformed Lin Kuei. By this time, Scorpion had already regained his humanity and assisted Sub-Zero as Hanzo Asashi. Sub-Zero felt a deep pain knowing that he failed to protect his new recruits, and Hanzo promised that his clan would be avenged. While exploring the facility, Sub-Zero discovered that his old corrupted student, Frost, joined the Cyber Lin Kuei. He attacked Actor and Hanzo held Cyrax at bay. We require additional candidates for cyberization. Once delivered, how long before the next generation is done? Lin Kuei. 
You corrupted our clan when you made peace with this Shirai Ryu filth. With Kronika's help, I will restore the Lin Kuei's honor. Keep Cyrex alive. We need him. took down Cyrax, and just like in the original timeline, Sub-Zero began the process of reprogramming him. But it would take some time. The original Sub-Zero, Bihan, now Noob Saibot, was also working on Kronika's behalf, and was summoned to stop Sub-Zero and Hanzo. But Hanzo challenged his old nemesis while Sub-Zero finished the process of rebooting Cyrax. Based on his previous experiences, Sub-Zero knew that Cyrax would do the right thing and stand against Sector. Experience. Kuan Yang, is that you? You look so old. And Scorpion? We'll explain later. For now, know we share the same goal the Cyber Lin Kuei's destruction. We need your help, Cyrax. I can disable their communications network. It will shut down this factory and every Cyber Lin Kuei connected to it. Anything is possible. Hanzo and I are living proof. Please, don't bring me back as a machine. I can't live like this. Machine or man, you have a warrior soul. As long as I am Grand Master, the Lin Kuei will welcome you. Then until we meet again. For the second time, Cyrax selflessly sacrificed himself to destroy the Cyberlin Quay and wipe the slate clean, ending his current history in the Mortal Kombat universe. In the end, Kronika was destroyed by Fire God Liu Kang, and a new era was created free of her influence. In this new era, will Cyrax avoid his fate of becoming a cybernetic slave to his clan, or is he destined to repeat the past and become a pawn of Sector? If you'd like to support my work, I invite you to become a patron. There's multiple levels of support available, or for an option right here on YouTube, you can become a channel member and gain access to exclusive badges and emojis for live streams and exclusive polls. Every dollar help keeps the wheels turning, and I'd like to thank my current patrons and channel members for their continued support. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications, and make sure you follow me on social media so you never miss a thing. All links below. I'll catch you guys later.